So, picture this. Imagine it's a hot day outside. Well, maybe you're lucky enough not to have to imagine that right now, but even so, it's a hot day outside. You want some cold drinks, but you don't want to lug a 80 pound cooler around, and you don't want to have to deal with cleaning it out afterwards and getting rid of all the ice water. I have a more convenient option. So you're sitting in the park with your ISIS cooler. People may think you're about to call on a missile strike, but in reality, you're just about to have an ice cold drink. The cooler stores up to three standard size soft drinks and features a fridge light for darker situations. It's nice and sturdy and solid. And it runs off of 12 volts. So it's a very standard input. You could power this off of a, a car socket. Everybody has one of those. So the project starts with the temperature controlled relay module and a Peltier module which has been in my drawers for quite a few years. So after all I figured maybe this would be a better use for it. Peltier modules are at their most basic level heat pumps. They consist of many internal junctions of two different metals which when voltage is applied will pump heat from one side of the device to the other. One thing to note is they tend to be very inefficient, somewhere around 30%, so you wouldn't use them in any large-scale project. Any fridge will always start with its container. I bought a water-resistant tool case from Princess Auto for this purpose. It seems sturdy and looks visually appealing. The first thing to do was to mount the temperature control module. I chose the top of the lid, which previously held a sticker, and has a nearly perfectly sized indentation. I would recommend cutting with a Dremel, however at the time I used a box cutter heated with a torch. Uh, not particularly good for my lungs, but it got the job done. After I made the hole, I simply pushed in the module. To secure the module, I used some clear two-part epoxy, which has the added benefit of sealing it against moisture. The next important part of the fridge is the insulation. Luckily, the best insulation also happens to be easy to work with. Polystyrene, rigid and effective. So I cut one inch thick polystyrene, probably overkill, but every little bit helps, whilst cutting cavities for electronics. It was secured via pushing it into the box and gluing it in with hot glue. Now onto the wiring. This diagram indicates the operating principles of the fridge. Power enters via an XT60 connector, fairly common in the RC industry. Then power flows to a couple of separate circuits. Power flows through a normally closed switch, as in when the lid is open and the switch is in its normal state, power flows through it to the fridge light. So, aside from the fridge light, we have the cooling circuit. Power flows to the relay module in the lid, which activates the relay when the temperature is above a set limit. Power is then allowed to flow into the rear fan and the Peltier module. Fairly simple. So, after the wiring was completed, it was time to make the rear cooling assembly. This is where I made my major mistake. Peltier modules are only able to achieve such a large temperature difference whilst being effective. Do not undersize your heatsink. I recommend a beefy air cooler for a computer. The CPU cooler was installed on a rear plastic plate and then screwed into the box. Another important part of the fridge is how the cooling is distributed inside the fridge. Originally I intended to use a fan, however fans add a small amount of heat and add potential for failures. For a small fridge like this I recommend aluminum lining. Aluminum lining will protect your foam from physical damage and aluminum being quite conductive of heat will move heat 
to the cooling module effectively. The Peltier module will be bonded to the rear plate of the fridge. However, it only protrudes a quarter of an inch into the insulation, leaving a large gap between the cold side and the fridge lining. So as such, I need to make spacers. So I cut some spacers out of a thick aluminum plate. I place the spacers on the colder side as opposed to the hot side. As the spacers don't perfectly conduct heat, and cooling the hot side is more important for effective operation of the fridge. So, after applying thermal paste to all surfaces of the rear cooling assembly, and installing the insulation on the back, I cleaned the aluminum plate and pressed it on. Then I installed the screws which would clamp the assembly together and ensure proper contact on all the cooling surfaces. The other aluminum lining plates were installed via hot glue, and all the edges were sealed up with silicone to prevent condensation from getting into the insulation. After a little cleanup with tape, it was time to install the temperature sensor, which was the last step of assembly. I just used some super glue and I glued it down as close to the Peltier module as possible. For testing of the fridge, I used a handheld infrared thermometer and measured various plates in the fridge. The black duct tape was to allow proper readings, as metal can act like a mirror for infrared and give inaccurate readings. Initially I took measurements every minute, however that soon became tedious, so I reduced the frequency of my measurements. The test lasted 60 minutes. After initial testing I wanted to see what the fridge was capable of in the long term. So I set the temperature to negative 1.5 degrees on the rear plate to hopefully compensate for the slow-ish heat conduction inside the fridge. And I put a Coke inside and I checked the temperatures 24 hours later. Go looking inside. This is what it eventually settled down to. We got this side plate at a temperature of 5.8 degrees. This rear plate right over the Peltier module is at minus 3 degrees. The bottom plate is at 2.8 degrees. The front plate is at 4.7 degrees. And I have stored a Coke can in here. And that has reached a temperature of 4.4 degrees. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would encourage you to like and subscribe and consider sharing the video. It really helps out the channel. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them in the comment section down below.